You're also staying at home? I got some pretty cool ideas for you. Quick preview. Okay, let's go. To start the video, I got a very cool, very simple, but very effective hack for you. By the way, that's a sundew. Which background would you prefer, the green or the black one? I like the black one. It looks clean and professional. But where's the difference between those two images? Let's take a closer look. Did I photograph the sundew with a black or with a white background? The answer is, both will have a black background. Because the only thing that matters is the distance between the wall and the sundew. I will show you. I closed down the aperture and used a flash. So without the flash, the image is completely black. I used a flashlight to illustrate the light coming from the flash. Just the sundew in the foreground gets illuminated. The wall remains black. That's the whole secret here. Taking pictures with a black background, use a flash and create some distance between the object and the background. That's it. Yeah, those images look pretty okay. I'd like to add some water drops to make the image look more interesting. Again, those images were taken with a flash and a flash diffuser. If you'd like to learn more about that flash diffuser, I put a link for you into the description, because the tutorial is already online. Let's move on with a really exciting topic, splash photography. To take this image, you don't need a flash or a wireless trigger. You just need two light source and a camera. It's so simple. And now I'll show you how I did it. When you put two light source very close to the water glass, there's really no need to use an off-camera flash or even two off-camera flash. Just get very close. While I dropped the tomato with the left hand, my right hand pushed the trigger on my camera. Just get sure to switch to burst mode to take as many pictures as possible. I set my aperture to 5.6, my ISO to 400 and shot with a thousand of a second. Because the diameter of the tomato was almost the same size as the opening of the glass, it was pretty difficult to really hit it in the middle, but you get a really nice splash. Of course you can use a slice of a lemon for example, but then the splash is smaller and the image will, won't look that cool like that. I really did a lot of testing to find the best settings. ISO 400 is okay and I'd really recommend to use a shutter speed of at least a thousand of a second, otherwise you'd get motion blur. But hey, that's a matter of taste. Before I'm gonna share my next idea with you, some more macro shots of that tomato, which in my opinion are pretty cool. My next idea is for you, take an image of the aperture blades of your lens. Of course you can do that on a table, but if you have two tripods, use them. For this shot, I just switched from aperture to shutter mode. And it really does help if you align both cameras. For the first image, I just used one softbox which created those reflections. I'm not sure if I like them. But I do like the shadows on the blades and the depth it creates on the image. If you don't like the big reflection, I got the solution for you. I turned off the softbox and replaced it by a torch. Now there are less reflections, but the image looks super flat. That's not my image. Okay, now let's create some cool textures with just dishwashing soap. For this shot I used my Sony A6300 with a 90mm macro lens together with a flash and a top mounted flash diffuser. To create those spheres, just shake the soap and fire with a flash. Huh, that's the same image just with a black background. You probably still remember how I did that. Well, I just put some soap on a glass plate, created some distance to the background and fire with a flash. Still the same technique. Hey, what about a little quiz? Can you guess what this might be? Without this brown thing, I wouldn't survive a week. Hey, it's coffee! Would you have guessed that coffee beans look like this in the macro perspective? I really like those kind of images. Okay, all coffee beans go back to work and we move on. With one of the most fun topics in photography, light painting. Therefore, we need a dark room and we have to set our camera settings to maybe 8 seconds, an aperture of 16 and ISO 100. Then we need one or several light source. Now you can get creative, use whatever you find. For the images in this video, I used the small disco light and the light chain from last Christmas. Sparklers will also work great or you can use any kind of color paper in front of a torch. There are really no limitations. Let's have a look on the results and then I will show you how I created those images so that you can recreate them if you want.
Any idea what the red color is coming from? Well, it's the color of my blood. Yeah, that was a little bit creepy. Now let's talk about the setup. For those images I used a mirror, but any black glass table for example will work as well. Then remove dirt and dust and choose your favorite item you'd like to take a creative image of. I'm really a big fan of lens ball photography, that's the reason why I chose it. And I will also put all kind of information and links for you into the description if you want to get more information about the objects I use for this video. Okay good, set the exposure to 8 or 10 seconds and start moving your light around your favorite object. At the moment I'm thinking of doing a whole video just about splash photography or light painting. Would that be interesting for you? I really hope that I could give you some inspiration for your next photo project. And I'm really interested if you've already tried light painting or maybe if you now plan to do so. Did I miss something? Are there any questions? Please leave a comment below. I will answer every comment as always. Hopefully get creative when staying at home and probably see you next week.